Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Autism Stories. I'm your host Doug Bletcher, the founder of Autism Personal Coach. Autistic people are the true experts of the autistic experience and Autism Stories is where we interview autistic people to learn from their stories, experiences, and get their insights. If you would like to be notified about each week's episode of Autism Stories, we suggest you subscribe on your favorite podcast listening platform. We would also appreciate it if you could give us a positive rating and review as it will help others to learn about Autism Stories. On today's episode, Graciela Lotharius joins me to discuss learning to communicate with a letter board, communicating things you truly want to say, and the impact of music on her life. We hope you enjoy today's conversation. Graciela, thanks so much for joining me today here on Autism Stories. I wanted to start out with uh, learning where does your story in the autistic community begin? I have been looking so forward to talking with you. In the podcast. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. There are a lot of ways that I could answer this. No, go the fork. Yes. Many days I had no idea that I was autistic, but then I hardly felt connected to the neurotypical community either. In the past, I needed connection with others, but I could not stay no, grounded short. long enough to let open the doors to a meaningful relationship. I really have the ability to communicate in an alternative Falling. way to thank for my awesome. having a place in the autistic community now. Before I could communicate Watch in this cake. way, each time I participated in any opportunity, I had no way to be a full participant because I did not have access to communication. I had some very lonely years, but I have been accepted into the loveliest tribe of non-speaking mm -hmm. autistics Yay. and and have to say that it is wonderful to feel like I now belong. I can be lonely oh, still, yeah. but I feel better and know that I There's can always do more to connect with my tribe. I think this is true for many people. I have also been involved in some educating and community building and have found this to be something that helps me feel more a part of the autistic community. We'll definitely talk a little bit about that later, but I wanted to know, um, you know, when you were diagnosed as autistic, I read uh, where the doctors, as doctors unfortunately tend to do, put limits on you and many other of us as autistic people. And that was, I'm sure, very tough for your parents to hear and so many other parents to hear. What would be your advice to parents, particularly of non-speakers, to continue to believe in their autistic child's intelligence and abilities, regardless of what the doctors say? I would tell them that it is open-mindedness that will help them through the bent nooks and crannies of the medical model of autism. Calling out the things that I wish my parents had done sooner has me thinking mostly about access to communication and greater educational opportunities that really worked to make me so much more able to do the intellectual thinking I am capable of doing. Daring to really presume competence and intelligence is the best thing parents can do. I've born in a way having parents who work hard to support my intelligence but I've been around so many parents who think they get it, but are still so lost. I wish these parents could make the commitment to do better. I have been in their children's shoes in the past, and I know that it's an awfully difficult place to be in. So Graciela, from what I understand, with your first lesson in learning to communicate using a letter board, that it went uh, really well, but... <laughs> The hardest part was becoming great at using the letter board. What have been some important things you've learned to get better at using the letter board over time? A lot of my success with the letter board has been because of my mom's commitment to being the best communication and regulation partner she can be. It is a skill for me 
and for anyone that wants to be able to communicate with me. Can you imagine so much wanting to do something, but having to do it with someone who is not always available or interested? I think this has been the hardest life lesson for me. Not everyone cares enough to make the time to develop the skills needed to be a communication and regulation partner. I wish to say thank you to those that have made the time. In terms of what has contributed to my success, I would have to say it boils down to getting as much practice as possible. In the beginning, finding a way was hard because my body had so many ideas of its own and I needed to start forcing my way through my impulses to hand things over to my purposeful movements and more reasoned thinking. It is important to take the time to really walk through these challenging changes carefully and think about how it is making the beautiful connections in the brain and body finally come together. I have been at this for nine years and can say that having this access to community through communication has been worth all of the practice. Also, I would like to say that I've been developing so many other skills because I now can get my body to cooperate more with my brain. I think that I've been so fortunate and that my life is more full of possibility than it was before I learned to communicate in this way. So I have to encourage those of you who might be on the fence to take the plunge for your child's sake. What is holding you back? Better to give it a try than to never listen to that inner voice that is telling you that there is more to your child than you realize. Now I've met autistics that have loops that are just impulsive responses to stimuli in their environment versus communicating the things that they truly want to do or say. So what would be some ways to help their loved ones to understand the difference between these two concepts? I want to get one thing clear. Really understanding the difference between a loop and what is purposeful is important to the way that you and your child will be able to flourish together. The many immediate and impulsive motor loops are in response to the constant interruption of sensory stimuli that is difficult to ignore. I think it's not easy to see what is happening internally. And so parents get confused by it and act as if it was intentional. I've been in that situation myself. Daring to work on what needs to change is important in all relationships and especially in the parent-child relationship. I think that it's really necessary to do the investigative work that is needed to determine what is an impulse and what is not. Is it happening so many times? And is it happening so quickly? If so, then it's probably an impulse. It is necessary to make the brain and body connect in as many ways as possible and making time for many activities that help facilitate this connection is imperative. Now, Graciela, earlier you were talking about doing educating and community building and how that's been so, help you to feel more part of the autistic community. Now, something that you're doing that you've done is you are part of, of the Perfect Harmony Health Ambassador Board which is made up of individuals who want to improve uh, their community through the magic of music. In what ways has music impacted your life? We're going Often the right music at the right time is what I need to help myself stay regulated. I have a deep love for music and how it is a lot of the time able to move us to another emotional state. Because I have strong associations with some songs, I tend to listen to them over and over. I love listening to the beat, and I have been loving the mathematical beauty I can hear in music. A lot of the time I have to myself, I spend listening to music. I have been challenging myself to have other hobbies 
but I've been so liking my music that it's been hard to stop. So want to say that I love music more than life. I read something where you said that it is awesome to do the things that I really want to do in my life now that I can communicate about these things. So what are some of those things that you want to do now, Graciela? I want to go to college and I really want to get a job. I love math and science and think that I can make some interesting contributions to science. I have been wanting to go to college for so long. I have so many big dreams. I'm good with math, terrible with science. So I'll let you handle the science parts. <laughs> In closing, is there anything you wanted to mention that we haven't discussed yet? I have so many things that I want to make happen and I have so many dreams for my life. Yeah. I cannot be more grateful for my hardworking parents who have given me every opportunity of my life so far. Being autistic and minimally speaking means that there is some level of support that is needed to be in the community. There are a limited number of people who want to support me in these endeavors. I have been despairing over this and have had many nights in which the fear of a limited Go future feelings? that makes me a homebody takes See, over. How you feel, Blaine? Can we find some way to work together to eliminate these fears for each one of us? Being a change Talk maker still. is not hard to dream about, but actually making the dream come true is the really difficult part. Absolutely. And uh, I really am really appreciative, Graciela, of your time today. Thanks so much for joining me today here on Autism Stories. I've loved being a part of your podcast and want to thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much to Graciela for the conversation. Here at Autism Personal Coach, our clients are the experts, our coaches are the guides. The majority of supports for autistics are not helpful. They try to fix us, not support us. That's why many are confused when we say our clients are the experts, experts of their lived experience. Our clients are the experts for what's worked for them and about the things that they need and want in their lives. Our coaches first listen to the clients, then ask thoughtful questions, offer resources, and strategize with their clients so they can get what they need to thrive. Would you want a guide in your life to coach you to get the things you desire? If so, then visit AutismPersonalCoach.com for more information. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Autism Stories. And if you did, if you could tell a friend, foe, or anyone you know about it so they could have the same enjoyable and educational experience as you when listening to Autism Stories, it would be very much appreciated. Until next time, I'm Doug Bletcher of Autism Personal Coach. Talk to you then.